Here on Georgia's Stone Mountain, enormous sculpted images of Jefferson Davis, Robert E. Lee, and Stonewall Jackson gaze toward Atlanta. While these Civil War heroes witnessed its destruction in 1864, Atlanta has done nothing but blossom ever since. From the invention of Coca-Cola here in 1886 to hosting the Summer Olympics in 1996, Atlanta continues to grow. Yet in spite of urban growth, Atlanta is also known as the City of Trees, and those trees attract a huge variety of birds and bird watchers. One of the youngest has got to be six-year-old John King Jr. John hopes to have his backyard designated as an official bird sanctuary by the Audubon Society. He's already learned a great deal about local birds from George Ann Schmaltz, the president of the Atlanta chapter. Today, I'm helping John and his parents, John and Becky, attract even more feathered friends to their home by creating a backyard bird sanctuary. The main idea with bird sanctuaries is to add functional things and diversify what you've got. Now, when you say functional things, you mean places where they can eat, where they can Yeah, bat, different bat. levels of habitat, different types of trees, deciduous leaves, evergreen leaves, different thicknesses, so that when a bird lands here, it feels right to them. So they'll either stay here for the winter because of shelter and food, or they'll, when they're migrating through, there's good food in the canopy, or they might want to nest here because there are holes in trees, or boxes up, or fruit that they can feed their young, or lots of insects. So it's not just things that we build, but the vegetation that right. we put out here as well. So we have our shopping list. Yeah. And John, you're gonna build, you and I together, right? We're gonna build some more of these? <laughs> I got a bunch of tools, all right? But I don't know much about birds, so I'll tell you a little bit about the tools, you tell me more about birds. We'll both be winners on this, all right? Along with John's sister, Augusta, and the rest of the group, we climb aboard my motorhome for a shopping spree. We're stopping at the Home Improvement Center to buy a variety of bird feeders and baths, as well as lumber for the birdhouses and special plants that should draw birds to the yard. This right here is the um, inkberry holly. This is a native shrub. It produces black berries. They're kind of black to purple in the summer, and the birds just love it. So this is breakfast, John. Yeah. <laughs> This is another great plant. Um, this is the Miss Huff Lantana, and it's a great bird attractant. Um, what is butterfly. it that attracts the birds to that? Does it have a berry? I believe it's more the color. It'll it does go berry have in the fall, but yeah, it's a nice flat surface, great for butterflies too. Next, we head indoors, where there's seemingly a house, bath, or feeder for everything from chickadees to turkey vultures. With our carts full of plants, houses, and feeders, we head back to the house to begin building our sanctuary. All right, so we've got the potential then to attract a, a, a number of birds here. Right, House Finch right above us that's listening to all this. He's waiting for these to go to sea. The word is out. <laughs> yeah, the word is out. out. They're already gathering. The feed is on at the right. King residence, okay. <laughs> Those birds sound hungry, so we better get cracking. George Ann says goodbye, but she'll be back later to check on our progress. All right, well, I'm gonna go to work. Okay, Leave good luck. John and Becky grab some shovels and begin removing a patch of liriope, an attractive shrub, but not very appealing to birds. We'll replace it with monarda, a plant with tube-like flowers that are a favorite of hummingbirds. Meanwhile, John Jr. and I start another project. John, this is the bird box, or bird house, that George Ann brought over, and this is the one that we're gonna make right here, okay? So the first thing we gotta do is cut out these pieces. That's what we're kinda set up here for. So let's start with the back. I'll measure this one. 13 and 3 quarters. Now, you want to measure down from the end there, 13 and 3 quarters? Now, you can take that away, John. Now, this is a square, so lay that. So, see this edge right here? That goes along the edge of the board. Good man. The saw that we're going to use to cut this with is a Japanese hand saw. Now, Japanese hand saws only cut when you pull them toward you. So, it's, this is when it's cutting, and this is how you use it. I'm just going to start it for you here. Put it on the line, and you just pull this back toward you, like I'm doing here. Nice long stroke. Nice and easy now. There you go. Okay, so this is the back right here. That's the side. So we're going to start by nailing the side to the back. Okay. All right. That sound right? I like the wooden hammer. No. You want? I do. That's my favorite hammer right there. Now before John gets to hammering, there's actually something right I can do to make it easier for him to drive in the nails. 
Now we often think about drilling pilot holes when we're putting in screw. A pilot hole is a small hole that allows the screw to go in more easily, but there are also times when it makes sense to drill a pilot hole for nails. For example, if you're building a project like this with your kids, it makes it a lot easier for them if you'll take a small drill, make a hole first, and then start the nail for them. Let them finish it up. The nail goes in a lot more easily and probably won't bend. Ouch, 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 ouch! <laughs> Just as John Jr. gets rolling. It lightning. We are going to be cut short today. We've got a second day in a row. We've had a pretty serious thunderstorm coming in in the afternoon. So we're going to stop and pick this up in the morning. With a downpour only seconds away, sound engineer Vince Nuccio can't work fast enough to get my mic off. We won't be deterred from finishing this project. Well, the storm clouds have cleared over Atlanta, so I'm back at the home of the John and Becky King family to help build a backyard bird sanctuary. John and Becky have traded in their shovels for a portable rototiller. They're prepping the soil to plant Menarda, a flowering shrub that hummingbirds just can't resist. Come on, Ron! Meantime, John Jr. and I are about to complete the construction on our first birdhouse. All right, should we do it? Yeah! I think I know what to do. I think! After a brief lesson, John uses the hole saw to bore an entrance to the birdhouse. What we don't? What do you think? We got a hole! Uh, is that the right size? Perfect size. Okay, should we nail it on? Let's sure. Do that. Let's, Let's do nail. that. Okay. I'm the best nailer! Oh, I can do anything! I need my special hammer! Who says home improvement doesn't build self-confidence? I drill a pilot hole and John hammers in nails, attaching the front panel onto the rest of our birdhouse. By golly, John, you've done it. No. We just need a roof now, huh? While John and I finish up on the roof, John Sr. and Becky have turned to post hole diggers and begin planting shamrock holly and black-eyed Susans both specifically selected for their appeal to the local bird population. Let's see what these guys have been doing over here. Oh, wow, John, that oh, wow. is great. John? Great see, job. You've been doing a lot of hole digging here. You did a well, great John job. Well, John and I have been doing fine carpentry work over there. Yeah, <laughs> this Good. looks like it. Nice. Good yeah, job, John. Yeah, John, it's great. Where are we going to put it? Um, right up there. With a boost from a stepladder, John screws right. the birdhouse to the tree. Push, 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 push. Then push, fills it push. with wood shavings sold specifically as Chicken. nesting material for smaller birds such as chickadees. Now, how do you get to know there's a chickadee in here? Um, they usually are gonna chickadees. Well, nut hatches could be in here because they could be in here because they could they walk on trees too and they could go inside. Okay, so but you'll just watch for them, huh? Uh -huh. Birdhouse number two which we purchased in kit form on our shopping trip, will be attached to a post. It's designed to fit around this stake, which John drives in with a two-pound sledge. Our post is open on one side and tapered at the bottom. This allows us to slide it over the stake and drive it into the ground. Our kit also comes with this cover panel, which John nails into place. See the hole right there? I'm gonna put that right in there. The top half of the post simply screws into a pre-drilled hole on the bottom section. This is not a good idea to have all the seeds down here in the ground. What's the problem? The birds could walk in their food and they, they could grow fungus and bacteria. Okay, because there's like uh, droppings that come down here mm -hmm. too and they come down and eat, so we don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. And also this attracts rats? Rats and okay. rodents. So we're gonna, we're, gonna take this, uh, we're gonna take this grass out and put in some mulch. And I wanna first of all cut a nice circle here so that it looks really neat. To accomplish this, I tie one end of a string to the post, let it out about two feet, then tie another loop and insert a container of chalk inside. Hold the string tight and kind of give it a little squeeze like this and work your way around the post, okay? Okay, that's a circle, right? Well, it's time to do some digging. We dig out about three inches, then cover the area with pine bark. This helps keep the surface beneath the feeder more sanitary. 
As seeds and droppings hit the bark, they'll filter through to the ground and decompose. With our pine bark down, we're adding a baffle to keep squirrels from climbing up to the feeder. Oh, that's my favorite hammer? Okay, I'll... there you go. Thank you, John. This is my favorite hammer. With the baffle in place, we attach the birdhouse to the top of the post with screws. Thanks, John. Next, it's time to fill up the pantry. Uh, how long will that last? A day. Come on. If, if that. Yeah, what kind of Well, you either have a lot of birds around here or a few obese birds. <laughs> That's a lot of food. OK, John, here's the top of right, the John. All right. Whoa. Yeah. All right. All right, come Great on, you job. guys. Soup's on. Absolutely. We're down to a few finishing touches, such as attaching the hummingbird feeder to the deck railing. So with a little spare time, we break out the home video camera and capture some behind the scenes moments on house calls. See the camera? Look at the camera. Oh, you're doing higher than me. Let's take the pan out. Here you go, honey. I'm exhausted. <laughs> Did you have any idea you were going to be doing this much? No, I had no, no. Idea. We thought it was a turnkey situation. Like putting up a couple of birdhouses right, right, right and watch and say, oh, great, Ron. That is so nice, We Ron. love our new birdhouses. <laughs> Mommy, oh. hey, give me some gloves. Oh, man. I don't believe I did that. You know that stuff I was hacking away at? Mm -hmm. Do you know what that was? I was wrapping around my arm. Have you ever heard leaves of three, leave it be? I looked at it and I said to myself, that's, be sure you get it right side up. And I did exactly the opposite. It was poison ivy. Well, I have to say that I learned a lot on this project. You saw me stuffing it in. Stuffed it in that Wrap it around. I didn't realize that you could attract birds to your yard depending on what kind of feeders you put out, what kind of plants you put out. That's kind of exciting. All right, guys, let's take a look at what we got done today, starting with the hummingbirds. The hummingbirds, and that's up here close to the house where you can see them real easily. Now, down here, John, we've got the suet feeder. Suet feeder, and this would be for what kind of birds? Woodpeckers. Woodpeckers. Now, over here, we've got some plants that we put on. What are these called? Um, shamrock holly. Shamrock holly. They produce a berry for all kinds of birds. All right, cardinals uh -huh. love them. And what, what do we have in here? Um, safflower. Safflower seeds. Every squirrels don't like it, but bird, every kind of bird does. Squirrels don't like it, all the birds do. But we've got our squirrel thing up here anyway, a squirrel baffle, all right? And here's our gazebo, huh? Oh, yeah. This is for, for everybody? Everybody can feed from this? Actually, Ron, this is a virtual bird cafeteria. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit for everybody, I think. Hey, George Ann, well, how are hi, you? folks, I'm doing fine. This so, looks fantastic. Yeah? Yes. We did a good job? Oh, you've added a little bit of everything. I think you've raised your yard to another level of habitat. We have created a sanctuary of Enough sorts? Enough to be certified as a sanctuary. Really? Right. You're an official sanctuary now? Official. By the Audubon Society? Society. I think we got to go hang this up. What do you say? Oh, Let's go over here. With a little help from your home improvement center or the Audubon Society, you can get ideas for customizing your own backyard bird sanctuary. And I can't think of a better backyard improvement project than one that provides color, song, hours of enjoyment, while giving urban wildlife a helping hand.